Hello guys and welcome back to Holistic Homesteading with the Hearst. I'm Megan and I want to give you a tour of my garden today. So I'm going to show you the good and the bad. I am not an expert gardener. I've only been doing this for about four years and a lot of this stuff this year is the very first time I've ever grown it. So some of the things I know how to grow it and it's worked really well for me. Some of the things have not worked really well. So I'm going to show you guys everything give you a tour of our Back to Eden garden. First off, just talking about the Back to Eden garden. What we did is we came in, we laid down newspaper, put on some compost and then wood chips for most of it. Some of it, we have not had time to lay down newspaper. We had the wood chips, had to get it spread out. So we just covered it up. Some of it's still coming back through. So we're hoping to be able to keep layering mulch on top of it to keep out the weeds. We'll see how it goes. Some of it we've already put extra cardboard on top to cut out the weeds and then we're going to just layer some more wood chips on there so really we're just trying to work on the fertility of the soil and pretty much do a no dig approach to this garden okay so i am standing in the edge of our garden right now and i'm grounding it just rained last night so i wanted to take the benefits of that i have no shoes on if you're not sure what grounding is so the layout of this i really want it to eventually be almost like a maze where you're just kind of weaving in and out of it i don't really want like the perfectly straight rows of crops and just having to walk in between each rows like i really want it almost like a, a cottage meadowy garden i don't I really know how to explain it so we've got some flowers incorporated we also have vegetables in here and herbs and then I've got just little structures built, some raised beds, some things are directly sewn in the ground. So I like that bit of variety in, in the garden. So, and I just think that it makes it a lot prettier. So for instance, right here, we have directly sewn pumpkin seeds into the ground. This is a part of the garden that we don't have a lot of anything planted. I knew that pumpkins tend to vine out and cover a large area of space. So I wanted to just put them kind of out to themselves directly in the ground. We'll see how these grow. I've never grown pumpkins before, so, but it was pretty cool to see that they sprouted. Okay, so in this area right here are our flowers. I wanted to plant flowers in the garden to attract pollinators to help with the vegetable production. Some of these, like these calla lilies are from my grandmother's garden. We just transplanted them. And then she also gave me another one that will flower eventually, but I'm not really sure. I can't remember what it was, but they're just little bitty flowers. And these I just got at the local Rural King. Um, I'm really not sure what they are. I planted some seeds here. There's something sprouting, but I'm pretty sure it's just a weed. I could be wrong. I'm just going to let it kind of grow up just a little bit to see what it looks like. And then in this little area right here, I have some poppy seeds that have sprouted. So all of this I've never grown before and I'm not really sure like how to take care of it. But I was really excited when the calla lily had its first bloom. And I really enjoy all the colors of the different flowers. Over here we have our tomato plants. I planted the first set of tomatoes just shortly after the last frost date and we still had a frost and I did not cover them and they died. So I ended up buying some more tomato plants from our local farmers market. These are beefsteak tomatoes and then I have another variety. I can't remember what kind it is but it's a golden one. So I have another variety of tomato plants as well. It's just one. Um, I've never grown it before so we'll see. I have grown beefsteak tomatoes I know we like them. I really wanted to get more tomatoes to make pizza sauces, but I didn't buy those this year. So anyways, this is our little tomato area. So right next to our tomatoes, I've planted some perennials, raspberries for one. And on the other side are some blueberry bushes. I just wanted to be able to come out to the garden no matter what time of the year it is and at least have some plants in here. So right behind me here is some rhubarb which is not doing very well. I bought the plants from our local farmers market and they looked nice and healthy and lively but they have not grown at all since I've planted them so I don't know what I've done wrong. Um, maybe they are not getting enough sun. 
we are kind of around, I think 9.30, maybe 10 o'clock, and we're just now getting some sun hit on the garden, so we have lots of trees around us, so maybe that's a case, I'm not really sure. If you have any tips on growing rhubarb, you can let me know. I've never grown it, never even tasted it, but Brian said he likes rhubarb pie, so I was gonna try it. So one of the things that I'm most excited about in my garden are the strawberries. <laughs> and they have not sprouted, but maybe one or two strawberries. I assumed that that would be the case for this first year. So hopefully next year we'll get quite a few strawberries from about, I think there's 10 plants maybe here. And then right next to it is some stevia. So this started off as a really small bush and in the last couple of weeks it has really grown. The kids love to come out here and just pick off some and eat it. So I'm excited that they are really getting used to the garden. I've never grown this before. I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to do at the end of the season, if it's a perennial or annual, but we'll figure it out. Right over here, I have my zucchini and some cucumbers, pickling cucumbers growing in a raised bed. I did not have very much compost to fill this up with, so this is just kind of like a trial and error thing. My zucchini always seems to do really well. Um, it's already growing in here, you can see. I've never had success with cucumbers, but I've never gotten this far either. So I bought the cucumbers from plants at the local farmer's market, and they seem to be doing really well. I built this little trellis it looked cuter in my head, but it's working. And then in the same thing, I planted a couple of sunflower seeds. So these will be sunflowers, and they seem to be doing pretty well as well. Over here in the herb garden, we have cilantro, dill, and catnip. Oh wait, you're not catnip. What are you doing in the herb garden, stinker? So this little thing I found on the property when we moved here, I think that they probably grew something in it because there's another one just like it over there and it had dirt already in it built and supported with this thing, which is about to fall apart. We may have to build us a new one, but it was really perfect for a little herb garden. Thankfully there's nothing planted here because you're not supposed to be in there. So right below my little herb garden, is a habanero plant. I know that they like a lot of sun, so this seems to be pretty good. I don't think it'll be shaded too much. It's not grown since I planted it, but it's only been a few days, so hopefully that works. I wanna make some of my own hot sauce. Now through here is our grape trellis, and it used to be an arch, but the structure just was not very good, <laughs> was not strong enough to hold some grapes when they start going, so. We ended up making just a trellis out of cattle panel. And the grapevines have already shot out. They are climbing. And I am excited to see how many grapes, if we get any this year, and just to watch these things get established. So it's pretty cool. And it can't be a really good garden without mentioning the animals that are gonna be helping us work the garden soon. So we are placing our chicken run right next to the garden. We're gonna make them a permanent feature there. We're gonna deep mulch, and then we'll be able to use that and their manure as compost and fertilizer for our gardens in the future. And right over here we have a pepper plant. Um, again, I'm wanting to make my own hot sauce, so this will be a good one. And I have bought this one from the farmer's market. Did not start this one from seed, so hopefully this will survive. Now over here is where it kind of gets scary because the slugs and the other bugs have really made my leafy vegetables look like skeletons. Not very fun. So. I did spray them with a homemade pest control spray last night. It was like onions and oregano and stuff. And then it rained really hard. So it probably washed all of it away. So I have to redo it. But I don't think there's going to be something that's going to cure this overnight anyways. But this is some cauliflower. I don't know if we're going to get anything. And we have a couple more pickling cucumbers back there that are going to be climbing this trellis. 
that we found in our house when we moved in. Right over here are our potato plants and Sayla and I are actually going to dig those up today because all of them have flowered so they are ready to be pulled. I doubt I'm going to get like a whole lot of them, maybe two to three potatoes per plant. So this is my first run with potatoes. I just wanted to throw some out there, see if they grew. They did. So I'm pretty excited about that. Now over here, the slugs have been pretty tough on me too. And it's on my favorite thing in the garden. And that's my cabbage because we love coleslaw. We love um, sauerkraut and just other things that you can put cabbage in and they've destroyed it on the inside so the bigger leaves seem to be okay for the most part but the inside of it there's aphids and little cabbage worms and what else the slugs yeah so <sighs> i don't know if we're going to get any cabbage this year or not we may have to continue to buy that from our farmer's market and just preserve it which stinks because i was really looking forward to that the sun is getting bright <laughs> I know I'm here to stay. And over here are my carrots, and some of them I think are ready to be picked. And then I need to sow some more for more produce. But I do have an issue with carrots. For some reason, my carrots always seem to be rubbery after I pick them. Um, I've grown them for two or three years in a row, and every single time they will get super rubbery. And they're not like the ones at the store, which I know that's totally different. Although the ones that I buy at the store are organic, but do they spray them? Like, how do they keep them tough? So if you have any suggestions on how to keep mine nice and crisp, please let me know in the comment section below. I really need some help. And last but not least, these were given to me as seeds, and these are loofah plants. So I've never grown loofah either. They are starting to sprout. They are kind of grown like zucchini and then you let them dry out and you can cut them up as loofahs. So let me know in the comment section below, have you ever grown loofahs before? One last thing, the perimeter of our garden is surrounded by fruit trees. We have four apple trees and a peach tree and I would love to create our very own orchard here um, and expand this garden to even more so that we can have lots of food and honestly it's just beautiful to look at I love coming out here it's so peaceful but that Sun is coming up over those trees very quickly so I want to get these potatoes pulled before it gets too hot out here and get some work done inside the house so thank you so much for watching this video I hope if you haven't already that you will hit the subscribe button for more holistic health tips homesteading, and cabin DIYs. We'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.